Today in the lumber yard, I'm going to show you how to lay out and cut the pieces and assemble one of my saw husks. A lot of people have asked me, those are neat saw husks and really sharp ponies. How do you make them? Well, here's a plan how to do it. We're going to start with the end piece, which is called a gusset. To lay out the gusset, it's six inches across the top to match the six inch cap board and 10 inches across the bottom to get a nice angle. I don't know what the angle is. I don't care what the angle is. But I've drawn a center line on my board. From that center line, I measured over three inches. And I draw a line diagonal and another line diagonal. So the bottom of the gusset is 10 inches wide and the top of the gusset is six inches wide. And this will be my pattern. Put on my safety earmuffs, and I'll make these two cuts. Now that I have my pattern piece, I can apply that to the leftover blank and just draw a line. And I use the same piece over and over as a pattern and continue to cut until I have four gussets for each saw husk. I now have four gussets for each saw us already prepared. I saved my original pattern board. This is a gusset that I wouldn't use because of this big knot. Oh, by the way, this is all one by six pine stock. And there's no angle cuts other than the angle cut of the gusset. It's very simple to put together. I've prepared all the legs, which are 32 inches long. I've prepared the stretcher piece, which goes between the, under the middle. That one I've made 19 inches long. And I have my cap boards. They go across the top. You want to stay away from boards like this that have big knots. This is a very weak, even for a leg. And anything that has a barky edge like this most likely won't work. It may work as a stretcher, because I might be able to get one in here to use up this piece. So to begin, I like to use screws. I put together some of these with nails, and then the nails work out rock and a timber. The nails will work out. So I've often had problems with the nails, so I always use screws. So I start with two legs. This one's got a little bit of a bevel cut on it, so that might be a little difficult. but. You line up your gusset to the top, and I'm using a two and a half inch screw and a screw gun, which wasn't ready. And I'm going to screw into get them started. These are two and a half inch. 
galvanized screws because these saw houses are going to stay out outdoors. I'm going to put that on that corner like that. And I want this top edge of the leg to be even with the top edge of the gusset. Now sometimes you might have to pre-drill so it doesn't split your wood. Most of the time I don't. But you may have to. If you're comfortable with not pre-drilling, then go right ahead. But if you feel that your wood is going to split, then you better pre-drill. Sometimes I put three screws along the edge, but that's up to you. So now that's a pair of legs. And I need to do another pair. before we can begin to assemble. I hate when that happens. Oh, my, my goodness. I love these magnetic tips. This automatically gives you the angle. I don't have to worry about what it is. Like I said, I don't even know what it is. I don't really care what it is. My drawing says that the base is 26 inches wide at this angle, which is pretty good. It's not real wide, and it's not real narrow. This horse has a different gusset shape and a narrower base, and I don't particularly care for that one too much. All right, so now I've got a pair of legs. And to attach the stretcher, you need to put them upside down and bring it in on the center line. Now, I didn't draw a center line on this gusset, and you can if you want to, but I don't normally. I just wing it, plus I make these all the time. Seems like you never have enough horses in your corral. There's always a need for another pair of horses. I have two over there for a bench for my tools at the sawmill. I have two over there holding up my chop saw. And the only difference between these and a pony is that the pony has shorter legs. Otherwise, they are exactly identical. There's absolutely no difference. It's the same gusset, the same stretch of length, the same cap board, everything. I just make the pony shorter so that when I'm working with my boring machine and a timber on the ground,
they go together. Now, I can take and attach the exterior gusset to the leg. Nice about this tool is it does have a swap around bit, so if you wanted to pre bore, you could pre bore your hole, swap it around, drop it back in again. Very nice tool, very happy with it. Had it many, many years. A little bit of a challenge here on these when the leg doesn't line up, you have to kind of push it together. Get it in the right spot, and then you can drive your screw in. Sometimes it takes a clamp. Most of the time, I can just push it into place and get the leg in the right position, and then drive the screw in. This one's a little bit of a challenge today. Probably because I got the camera rolling. No, why I'd be nervous. All right, there's one in gusset. I flip it over. Get the other end gusset. Seems like I've always making boards at the sawmill. And I end up with a short piece of one by six that just doesn't make it into the customer's order or into my inventory. And I save all those pieces. I got a big pallet of them over there or a big lift. And that comes in handy when you want to make some horses. Now, there they, there's the legs. Here's your cap board. And the cap board on this one is 36 inches long. We got six, seven, eight inches here. Six, seven, eight inches here. Eight and eight is 16. 16 from 36 is 20. So this gusset should be 20 inches long. I actually cut it 19 inches so that I get a little bit of overhang on each end. And that seems to work out pretty good for me. And you want to start with securing one end into the side grain. And then if you can line up the other end and get that in position, centered on your gusset, Driving this screw. Now you got them pretty much locked down. I'll do another one into the end grain, the side grain of the other gusset. Another one into this gusset. But most importantly, you need to put some into the stretcher in the middle. So that's going into the side grain of the stretcher. And when you do this, you've got to make sure these heads are, are recessed. Because if you don't, and you're rolling your timber around on the saw hut, you'll end up with head prints. And that's done. And that is a strong saw hut. I hope you enjoyed it today.